What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gump's Podcast. Uh, we got some guests today, so uh, everybody just say hello really quick. Hello. Nico! <laughs> You're such an ass. I hope you know that, right? You know, guess who's who? Guess who's not getting a shout out at the end? So, Wait, I, I can. I'm only hearing you in and out. Like I was just came back and I heard you're such an ass, and I was like, "What? What did I do?" Is it? All right. Is it? Yeah. Oh my god, brother! I feel like like every time this computer sucks dick. I need a new computer, guys. Oh my god, brother! So if it cuts in and out, just uh, you know, I, I ignore it. Whatever. Go ahead and donate to the Gumps Videos Patreon. Uh, just get him a new computer. Yeah, no, okay. So, we don't have a lot of topics today, so uh, it's kind of tough. So, um, we'll start off very simple. Uh, top three an- most anticipated films for 2019. So, Andy from New Nerd Crew Podcast, you should subscribe to them. Uh, what are your top three most anticipated films of 2019? Uh, by the way, guys, the rule is we don't have Endgame in there because at the end of the day, and game is going to be all our number one, so we're going to just sweep that under the door because we all know that's going to be our number one most anticipated film yeah. of the year. Yeah, I wonder what I wonder what Genius uh, suggested that. It was, uh, uh, it it was, was totally me. It was totally, totally me. Totally. It was all, you know, all right. it was me and Andy. You know, Andy suggested something. He's like, we need to do something about Endgame. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I followed up with that. So it was his genius that kind of helped my genius, and Nico was just there. <laughs> Nah, you can say whatever you want with your damn propaganda. This is false advertisement. Whatever, I don't even give a shit. Uh, yeah. So my top three was very hard to narrow down because I feel like next year is going or this year is going to be a yeah. big year for movies. Um, and so I kind of picked three. One's kind of random, and then the other two aren't really that random. So one of mine is actually I'm very looking forward to Shazam. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because Shazam! yeah, because I think it's, um, which I didn't know this until a couple days ago, but they're not calling it the DCEU anymore. Uh, oh, really? They're calling World, it the World of, of DC. World of DC. So they're connected, but they're not. So like, if you noticed in, and this is a spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Aquaman, go see it. Um, but like in, in Aquaman, they barely, they only mentioned Steppenwolf one time and it was yeah, like really literally. quick. Like they talked about Steppenwolf and then they moved on. So it's like they they really aren't talking about the other movies, but they are. So I'm very excited to see what they are going to do with Shazam um, as its own entity, um, which I think is is smart for DC to look at it that way instead of trying to do what Marvel's doing because they are ten years too late trying to do that. Um, yeah. And then the next one I was looking forward to um, is actually a a new one, a one that's coming out really soon. Uh, Glass. Um, oh my God. It looks. Weird. I thought I was gonna have. I thought I was gonna be the only one with this on oh, my list. Dude, it looks and so I almost, good. I love Unbreakable. Yes. It's one of my favorite movies. Yes. And Split was really good. And it was the first time I was shocked. Yes. In a movie. Yeah. It was like since I started like religiously following movies. Right. It was. It didn't get me at the end. Like that's the first movie that got me at the end since uh, Inception. Because like Inception really made me freak out because i didn't know what the heck was going on for the most part dude i kind of rage i was like i'm like oh son of a bitch is it is it like is he is he awake is he asleep and then uh, <laughs> you know, i so I, I looked up to see what if christopher nolan responded to that he did he's like does it matter he's happy i'm like wow way to make me feel like a fucking dick <laughs> like, like, christopher seriously. nolan told michael kane that every scene he was in was real so he did get back to the u.s oh wow wow okay Okay. See, I so love anything. Welcome. Sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm. So I'm really looking forward to to Glass because I think it's just going to be absolutely amazing, mind blowing. I'll probably have to watch it three times just to fully understand it. Um, which I love. Dude, I love yeah, movies yeah. like that. Which is tough though because uh, Glass was going to be my number three film, but it just barely made it in there for me. So like, if anything, Glass is going to be number four for me. But like, yeah, I, I'm kind of sad that it's not. At my number three but yeah you guys will probably see why at the end of the video well at the end of this topic yeah um and then my uh, my last one i was going to pick um which is the weird one um that it's kind of my wrestling side coming out i went i'm looking forward to the fighting with my family um oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that i think it's going to be absolutely amazing oh, yeah. i just hate that i know how that one ends you know yeah but i'm looking like, forward to see how they actually do it um 
specifically mm-hmm. because AJ Lee's not with them anymore and she's married to Punk and all that whole fiasco. So I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to handle all that. Yeah. Um, well, you think they'll have the video with Xavier Woods? <laughs> <laughs> I highly doubt that. That's all that. I highly doubt that. Well, it's not only embarrassing for Brad Maddox. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Embarrassing. <laughs> like, you know, Paige and Xavier Woods are just having a good time, and Brad Maddox was all up in there. Uh, sorry, Gump. Uh, yeah. Sorry, wrestling shit. Yeah, uh, do you want to explain it, like... Andy? You can go ahead. And, you guys can go ahead and explain it. Oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, since Nico, you know, <laughs> since Nico tried to derail my show, I'm going to go next. You know, because Nico's, you know, kind of a dick like that. So, my number three pick was uh, Shazam. Uh, Shazam, I'm really excited for. Um, he is one of my favorite DC characters. I remember, like, me being a kid, just, like, growing up, like, why isn't there a lot of kid superheroes? Like, isn't that, like, part of the fun? Just, like, being, like, imagine being a kid and then having these godlike powers. And then Shazam, or Captain Marvel back in the day... Uh, comes out. I see him in a couple animated stuff, and I'm like, this is so freaking cool. He's basically on par with Superman. The reason why he can beat Superman in a fight is because he's got magic and shit like that. So it's such a cool property. I'm really excited to see. And the trailer looked incredible. Um, I'm just excited to see more. I really am. Uh, my second one. This is where it gets really tough for me because um, I was kind of flip uh, flip flopping back and forth on the uh, on the topic, um, but. Uh, my number two is going to have to be Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, Spider-Man, my favorite superhero of all time. And we're going to get Mysterio, dude. I mean, that's fucking weird. <laughs> like, Mysterio is such an oddball character. But since this is taking place after the events of Infinity War and Endgame, I feel like Mysterio could do a lot of shit to mess with uh, with Spider-Man. We're going to see, like, a lot of conflict. I feel like there's going to be a lot of men- mental fighting instead of just physical fighting. We're going to see some physical fighting. I mean, it's a comic book movie, for God's sakes. But, like, it's going to definitely deal with Peter, like, realizing that he died. And it's going to – I see, like, Mysterio kind of constantly making – relive his death and shit like that. Yeah. And I think – yeah, I think that's going to be really effing cool. So there's a lot of cool shit you can do. I mean, this is the perfect time. Like, there's no better time to have Mysterio as your villain. Like, honestly. The only other time I would see Mysterio being a perfect villain is if Aunt May died. And this is way too early to have an Aunt May death – uh, so this is perfect timing for the MCU if you wanted him sooner rather than later. Uh, yeah. Number one, well, the I think that movie is going to pub, uh, like publicly wise. I think it's going to struggle until after Endgame. Um, yeah, because yeah. it's going to be hard like for them of... to to do anything because technically he's dead. So all their yeah, I... stuff that they're going to have to promote is going to be weird and hard for them to do. So I think it's it's going to be good. I mean, because if it's anything like Homecoming, then it's going to be. Absolutely amazing, but it's going to be hard for them to kind of, you know, roll with it after Endgame. Yeah, I, that's the one thing, but, like, it's kind of, like, the worst-kept secret. There's still some people out there who think Spider-Man is actually permanently dead. Yeah. And um, so for those few people at this point in time, they're the only ones that are going to be ruined. So I feel like by the time Captain Marvel comes out, I feel like we're going to get a trailer. Um, and... It's at that at that point you have to market it. You can't wait until Endgame comes out. You just can't, right? Um, yeah, because like at like basically Endgame it, that run will be finished by the time Spider Man Far From Home comes out. So at that by like some of that logic, you can't market this movie at all. So I feel like they're just gonna market Spider Man. Uh, co- probably the best thing I can think of is like probably keep the. The time frame a secret like is this before is this after because like, like the MCU does do that like like the the original movies were Iron Man Hulk Iron Man two and then uh, Captain America no it was Thor then Captain America Iron Man one takes place no Iron Man two takes place after Iron Man one Hulk takes place after Iron Man two so a lot of people don't know that but even though Hulk was re- uh, released after Iron Man one so there's some time frames that you could swap around and shit like that. So maybe you can play with the idea that like, hey, this might be right before um, you know, Infinity War. Some people are to this day still think that uh, Far From Home is gonna take place before uh, Far From Home because there's that there's this theory going around saying that like when we first introduced uh, Peter in um, Infinity War, we see him on a bus. People are like, that's him coming back from London. I'm like 
okay, like that's not too wild, but like I could tell you this with utmost confidence that's not the case. But anyway, uh, <laughs> enough on that because I, I I went on my spiel for a while, uh, and then my final one is uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Uh, I'm really excited for it. I'm like I love this movie. Uh, I love the first one. I had my problems with it yet again with everybody else saying that like hey. The movie it just teased a little too much. Uh, I agree with that. It didn't piss me off like I did it with a lot of people. But this one looks like they are going balls to the wall and saying, King Ghidorah is my favorite monster like in that Godzilla universe. And we're going to see him spitting out electricity, fucking up some shit. I'm really excited for that. That, that first and second trailer were just insane. I loved it. Uh, I went on for too long. Uh, Nico, what are your three top spot. three most anticipated uh, I went through. I went on IMDb, looked through all the stuff, and it was Mr. Glass or it was starring uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, like you said, they're going to be the worlds of DC now. So I'm just kind of curious to see what they do with it. I uh, didn't really like Jared Leto's Joker, but I think he didn't have a ton to work with. Like I felt like they cut a lot of his stuff out. This script, that Suicide Squad script, was written by two different people. They wrote it. One guy wrote. David Ayer wrote it in like forty-eight hours, <laughs> whatever. Uh, so that one had a lot of problems. I'm really excited to see what a guy like Todd Phillips does, who's made movies that I do really like, even though they're not in that genre. He does more comedies that I really like. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with it. I think it'd be really cool. Um, my second one is Toy Story Four. Because I love Toy Story. I mean, we all grew up in an era. We all grew up in that era where Toy Story was awesome. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Me too. Well, I prefer too. I prefer Bonnie yeah. anyways. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah Andy, I saw yeah, – when I first saw like, the first like, teaser of it. I didn't think really much oh, oh. of it. And then they came out with oh, one wow. where, like, uh, Keegan Michael <laughs> Key is talking to this other stuffed animal, and I thought that was really funny. It's like to infinity and beyond. He's like, what are you talking about? Going beyond infinity? You can't even get to infinity. It's infinity. You're crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're both in it. So I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited for that. And then I hope it's, well, or, it, even it though there's like a really sad song it. playing in the first teaser, I hope it's not as depressing so, yeah, as, as Toy Story 3 was. Or not yeah, depressing, yeah, really but excited. like yeah, I'm really excited heart-wrenching. Yeah, I'm really excited for that too as well. And then I hope it's, or, even though there's like a really sad song playing in the first teaser, I hope it's not as depressing. Tim Allen? Oh my god. Well, I, dude, all I, I know I, is. I'm just crying at that, dude. All I know is Tom oh. Hanks and, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Tim Allen. Oh said that it was the hardest thing they've ever got through was their last day of shooting and how it ends so (laughs) dude i know people are making jokes about that shit people are like let me guess you know uh the movie's gonna end with andy in like a freaking like old people home and he's gonna die of alzheimer's and shit like that i'm like the fuck is wrong with you people (laughs) dude what the fuck it's a it's a oh that's funny to you oh that's funny (laughs) well the third one basically was a toy holocaust (laughs) <laughs> I was funny because I was watching it the other day with my mom. It was on TV. <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> no, but like um, I was watching it with my mom the other day, and the entire movie, I'm like, this reminds me of the Holocaust. <laughs> so like, yeah. That's all I kept thinking of. I'm like, and I, now I can't unsee it. I'm like, and the, like the, the ending, that, and if you did not cry or tear up at least – at that very end scene where like they're about to be torched alive and you got uh you got all them holding hands and you got the horse struggling trying to like get out of there and then uh jesse's like stop fighting and they hold like she just holds him and then he stops fighting and i'm like oh my god they accepted their fate and it was sad I just but feel like anything dude it, it was really depressing if i end up walking I don't out care of there if it's happy or sad it fucking cares uh, my last one that nobody so has it after the last one but i'm still very excited for star wars <laughs> it's episode the only nine. thing i'm very excited for real <laughs> i'm very excited for jj Abrams to come back i'm not a i'm not a big hater of the last jedi there are some things that i wish they would have changed i think it's a that was on my movie. list and i took it off um but just you know i'm a big fan of all the star wars lore and i thought there was more to be done with it uh luke is one of, <laughs> uh luke is um is one of my favorite characters so i definitely wanted to see his story 
uh, unfold a little more because that was like the promise when we were shots this don't make a movie. new sequel trilogies that we were going to see our old friends again and then we they never got to reunite all together and i'm just a little disappointed but again i'm ready to go back to the galaxy far far away i'm ready to see this you know try and put a bow on the sky skywalker story and see what happens uh it's just i owe it to my to my smaller self to my younger self to be hyped for this movie and i am Okay. <laughs> See, I enjoyed the last one too. Like what? 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 I you enjoyed like? the. No, I enjoyed. I'm the sorry. Last I'm sorry. Is this is this a 2017? Everyone hates. Everyone is literally dead except for the one who's dead in real life. Explain that to me, like. Uh, You want to get, you want to get, you really want to get me started. You really want to get me started. I'm not even going to do it because I, I didn't get too much hate on that review, but I'm going to drop it because it's a new year. Did you like Solo? I didn't watch it. I'm going to though. My friend is going to show it to me uh, in a couple days, I uh, think. He said he's going to come over and he's going to. You'll appreciate uh, The Last Jedi more after you watch Solo because Solo is, Solo is something it, else. The fact <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. I I I, I thought I, I just I thought you were alluding to I didn't really like, see hey, the need something happened so. to no, solo that no, like really boosts up like no. nah nah. No, um, one makes the other one look a lot better. <laughs> no. No one asked that for even, it though. That's why I didn't even go. Is that even factor in the reshoots? You know? The fact oh, is, damn. the budget was three hundred million dollars, and it made probably like four hundred. <laughs> like. No, it made it a little bit more. Like it made it like five hundred. No, that that factors in the reshoots. Nothing should be over three hundred million dollars. So, especially something along the lines of Solo, like as Han Solo's uh, Solo movie. Like it should not be that much money. The original budget was like one hundred and twenty, and then they reshot the entire effing movie because let me let me get this straight. I never got this. They hire uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, guys who are known for their comedy and improv. They fire them at the like when they're done like 90 percent of the movie they fire them because guess what they were using improv in the movie you dumb bitch you know why <laughs> it makes no sense to me but whatever it's not a topic about solo um just yeah whatever <laughs> um it's, it's out of the way it's gone i'm really excited for toy story 4 i'm kind of excited for nine because like uh nico said that they are bringing back jj abrams um because I feel like what he set up in episode 7 was really good stuff. The reason why I – like there's a lot of reasons why I don't like episode 8. But uh, one thing I definitely did not like about it was the fact that it spent most of its time kind of throwing away what episode 7 set up. And like you guys – like with Snoke, you got Ray's parents, Luke. They kind of just threw that away. So that that's why – I wasn't too happy about that, but like since Abrams is coming back, coming back, I'm excited to see what he has to say for this finale of this trilogy, and it's going to be the last big, uh, big blockbuster of the decade. So really let that sink in. So it's going to have to come off uh, on a high I, note. I, I, there was a few um, really films excited, that though. I wanted that was to say, been, but like, in my I just felt like they're my most anticipated. But like okay. Mr. Glass, like uh, it's any, almost uh, here. Any final thoughts? Like, <laughs> so I, and Shazam, same uh, thing. I'm very excited for Shazam, for Shazam. But like again, like it's in March. Like I can, I can wait. <laughs> like I'm not. Or it's in February. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, again, same thing. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. Nobody mentioned Captain Marvel either. So, yeah, no, they yeah, the thing they is, bumped Shazam back to April. Yeah, the thing is with Captain Marvel though is because like I'm not really jumping up and down with the trailers. Uh, I'm not sure about you, Andy, but I know Nico knows. I have two very big unpopular opinions when it comes to the MCU. I do not like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, and I did not like Black Panther. Um, and both of those trailers when they uh, for both of those movies when they came out. I was never really jumping up and down about the trailers. I was not like, oh, this is so cool. I was just like, eh. And now I'm doing the same thing with this. And it's kind of getting me a little nervous. I'm not going to, like, kick, scream, and cry if I don't like it. But, like, 
there, I feel like there's that chance I'm not going to end up liking it. Mm-hmm. So I'm well, kind of pessimistic about it. <clears throat> yeah. But I'm still looking forward to it because it's like that's that the one thing I really liked out of all the trailers we got so far is definitely that last shot in the most recent trailer when she's like in space shooting lasers out of her hands. I'm like, dude, that's fucking dope. Yeah. If they, they did more of that. That's cool. There's just one line they keep showing in the trailers that I they think it's cool but I don't think it's that cool it sounds really effing cheesy where Nick Fury's like so are you a bunch of noble uh, warriors noble, hero like, noble warriors. warrior heroes yeah. I'm like I'm like that is so fucking dumb you think you sound cool you, you're, that, you think that's gonna get me hyped that just made me like roll the eyes my eyes in the back of my skull like like I'm a freaking possessed or something like that I'm like Oh, it's just, eh. but but whatever. I'm still looking forward to it though. Yeah, I think it'll be the action looks good. I think it'll be better than what people think, um, mm-hmm. just because it's something they've really never done before. I mean, because they don't, they've yeah. never had a superhero that's had this much power. Um, yeah. Because Kevin Feige's already said that she's the most powerful hero. Like she's more powerful than Thor. You know, she's about equal to Thanos without the gauntlet. So yeah, um, I think yep. they're I think they're gonna I don't really think they're giving us all that much in the trailer for a reason, uh, which I'm totally fine with because Ant Man and the Wasp basically gave us the entire movie in their trailer, so I'm fine with yeah, not getting another... a lot in in the trailer and then being surprised when we go to the movie. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, it's also really good to come into a movie with really low expectations and expecting this. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, walking out with, like, a big smile on your face. Because, like, with Black Panther, I was not too excited about the trailers. No, but I still had people. that, like, optimism. Like, it's a Marvel movie. I'm going to like it. But I just couldn't get on board with it. Was it the CGI uh, it, that got you? No, there was a couple things. Um, like, you know how the first... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are, like, into filmmaking or anything like that. But, like... The most drastic part of a movie is the first fifteen minutes. You, uh, if the first fifteen minutes don't like kind of immerse you into the film or like into the story, whatever, you kind of are just left there, just watching a movie. You're not immersed into the story and whatnot. The first fifteen minutes weren't awful, but there was just something about it that I couldn't get engaged with. So I was left there watching a movie the entire time. Yeah, and uh, so that was one major reason why I didn't like it. Yeah, there was a couple other reasons, like that first action scene with Black Panther. There's literally no lights, and we got Black Panther in a black suit, with like like the only light source is freaking gunshots and shit like that. So I'm sitting there trying to keep track of what's going on. It's got quick edits, so I wasn't a huge fan of the action either. There was some CGI in there that was sketchy, but what I about when they removed, removed a mustache? CGI because that's pretty effing dumb, but. Um, <laughs> Unless it's like Steppenwolf and shit like that, because that was pretty <laughs> effing bad. That was pretty sketch. But there was a there was a couple things in there. That was bad, <laughs> dude. Dude, oh I remember when gosh. I first saw the movie. I sat down with my friend and I'm watching the movie. And the first thing I said was like, "What the fuck's and wrong with this face?" That stash for mission. <laughs> like, and he started cracking the shit. Out. His Thank upper you. lip didn't move at all. Dude, it was so weird. I'm like, why? I, I want beard and mullet, <laughs> Superman. Just fucking just. Dope. Let Superman wear a stash. It'd have made it more interesting anyway. Yeah, just like he's like, dude, I've been I've been in a hard plus. Oh yeah. Beard and mullet oh beard and mullet <laughs> Superman. That'd be that'd be really interesting. And a Batman who actually wants to be there. <laughs> dude, Batman in that movie was just really depressing. Batman but, in every the, movie. Yeah, with sad Affleck, dude. That was tough. Like Bat Ben Affleck loves the character. He just doesn't and he show has, it. Like, no, it's just the fact that, you know, that hate for um bvs really hit him hard <laughs> and yeah they're like now he's in it he's in a path where if you guys don't know he's now back to drinking a lot a lot more than daddy really should and uh you mean his wife now he's in rehab and because he's in rehab for like what the third time Jennifer in, a, Gardner? in the span of two years he his girlfriend to leaves her. him they got a divorce and now they're like I don't think he wants to play. I don't. <laughs> okay, you literally no, just. They were, they were married. No, they they weren't married. Were they? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not fucking stalking these people. Like, hey, who's married to who? I really. What do you I mean? Really want you I'm to see sorry. This. I'm not. Co- I really want you to see this. You're like he's been drinking too much. Doing he's doing this and lives. this, and then you're like, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not in his life. But here you are okay. saying about how sad he is. I didn't know. 
<laughs> yeah, because it's hard to not fucking see it, though. It's hard to not see that shit. God, like, how long have she has he been with her? Like, f for what, like 10, 15 years? Probably longer. I'm going to look even more dumb. Beside the point, he, like, beside the point, he doesn't, his main concern is not Batman. I mean, the dude just, like Nico just said, he lost his wife. He's in rehab. I don't think playing a guy in a bat suit's his number one priority right now. Um, so, I feel like Andy doesn't Andy, agree with that. Was, lot, I, and, uh, when BVS first came out, I agree Even with that. Even though he was the best agree, part of that movie, I, I pretty much all, agree I think with we, that. Anyone who hates um, BVS, we can all agree Batman was the best part of that movie. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. We're agree all, with that at all. we're going off the rails, guys. <laughs> no, I do. I thought Doomsday was better than Batman, and I hated Doomsday with are you, passion. Are you? I hated fucking, Doomsday you're with joking. passion. You're joking. You're joking. You're, joking. Joking. you're on drugs. When he said, drugs. when he asked the question, do you bleed, I was completely done with Batman. I did like what he said, though. When he <laughs> I was done. One, like, I, hate a, I hate that Superman. And then in his robot really suit, one -sided he fight. Like an idiot. Uh, that's like, a whole other just, conversation. Yeah, I did like his one line at all. where he's just like, oh, I bet your parents taught you that you were special. <laughs> My parents taught me that you could die in the gutter with, for no reason at all. I did like that. I was just like, dude, that's fucking dark. That's pretty metal right there. I think we lost some guys. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing i liked about that movie was maybe like the 10 I like, seconds i liked wonder, wonder woman in that that was it i mm, eh, nah because she I was the only one that, that actually looked like she wanted to be there eh I mean, you're not wrong with that. You're not wrong with that but like because lex luther like was a mixture of the joker not even Lex Luthor, the Riddler, like, he, it was a mess. Dude, I, don't even get me started with Lex Luthor. That is, you know what I wanted to see as Lex Luthor? I wanted to see the guy that manipulates the Justice League, becomes the president, and makes the Justice League en enemy number one. Yeah. Like, that's what I wanted Lex to see. Lex Luthor isn't crazy. No. Lex Luthor is like a businessman. Like He's, he's super intelligent, yeah. and that's why he, that's why it's hard for Superman to fight him, because he's super intelligent. Superman is not dumb. But he like isn't, he's really he, is in, he is in the world of DC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, apparently he is. But like this notion that everything needs to be like the Dark Knight just pisses me off. We are really sidetracked, by the way, guys. <laughs> we're, we're 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 only on topic number one. Thank God there's only three more topics because if there was a lot more, we would be fucked. <laughs> like just just saying. Um. So dropping that topic because we went sidetracked. Badly, I mean badly. We were sidetracked for like fifteen minutes. Uh, let's go for let's go for uh, uh, topic I number think two. It looks dope as hell. Punisher season I really two like John, release date I love John revealed, Berthold which is in this January role. I love 18th, the Punisher. It's and there was a trailer attached to it. Top let's start with Nico. Five Nico, or ten what are your favorite thoughts on the trailer in comic books. Uh, Jigsaw face wasn't that bad. I don't know. Like he was a super handsome dude, and it looked like it was gonna be really bad after they fought in season one. Your face should be worse. Like. <laughs> Uh, yes, your face. I'm mean, like, I looked at that. I'm like, you, uh, your jigsaw. I'm like, wait, hold up. Yeah, I was like, dude, wait a minute. Women can still Let's see your talk handsome. about like, this. You got you. fucked, dude. You should <laughs> and, be a uh, lot and then worse the last than thing that. I wanted to say about this uh, is that I hope they go all out. Scars on all his these face Marvel. And Netflix shows are falling by the wayside. I'm almost 100% yeah. sure this will be the last season we get. I hope he murders everybody. I love this Frank Castle. Like He's just like, whatever, like reloading and like killing people. I, he's so cool. Very intense. John Bernthal is yeah. really intense. And that's because he's a really nice guy. And I'm looking at the picture I have with him. Me and him are bros. All right, we're BFFs, uh, not soulmates, because that's me and Andy. But yeah, love John, Ber love John Bernthal. Uh, somebody else go. <laughs> that's right. Okay, Andy, you go. Sam. Because I got a couple things to say. Um, so for me, I'm very excited for this because I think Punisher season one was my second favorite like marvel netflix series um season because daredevil season one i think is just like almost unbeatable um 
And then, like, Jessica Jones season one was close, and Luke Cage season one, all that. But I'm very excited to see because, like Nico said, I think they are going to go all out. Um, they've got nothing to lose, uh, so they're just going to kind of do whatever they want to do. I think it's going to be um, violent, more violent than season one, and season one was brutal. Um, so I'm, I'm, looking very, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do. Um, if they're going to just kind of end the character or if they're going to maybe set up something for the Disney app or – whatever they're going to do with these characters afterwards. Um, cool. But I think they're going to do really big things in season two. Um, so I am, uh, yet again, in the minority, not ashamed of it. Um, I I won't say I didn't like it. I wasn't a massive fan of season one of uh, Punisher. I, I liked it, but there was uh, one thing that was constantly uh, preventing me from loving it. Uh, I love the cat, uh, Frank Castle character. I love him to death. I love John Bernthal as Frank Castle. But the one thing that was constantly driving me back was um, the fact that, like, I know the character's really mean spirited. And me and Nico talked about this way back uh, in the day when, like, season one, like, first came. And when we first really met, uh, we talked about this. But I felt like he was so mean spirited. There was, like, not enough, like, happiness. Like, he. Like every time there was a chance for him to like not even not just crack a smile. I don't care if you crack a smile or not because he's he's a really dark character. It just seems like he was a dick at every single opportunity Micro. he could be. If you guys if you guys see what I mean, you can have a different opinion. I don't care. Um, it was just like wh- who was that guy that was helping him out in like in that little bunker thing that they were in? Micro, yeah. Like er- every time the d- guy proved himself to be useful and helpful. Frank found a reason to be a fucking dick to him still. And, like, I get it. He's got trust issues. But there's, like, a certain point where you got to be, like, okay, I'm not going to be a dick to him. I'm just going to be, like, I'm going to shut him out. But, like, he was, like, a fucking full-blown thought to the guy. And I, like, I felt bad for Micro at times. Uh, <clears throat> that that aside, that aside, uh, I, still, I still enjoyed, I'll say that, I enjoyed the show. So I am looking forward to season two. Um... The trailer for me didn't do too much. Uh, I sound like a fucking negative Nancy over here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, no, because like the one thing that put me off was Jigsaw's face. That's one. And uh, and another thing they didn't show too much, but like that's just a minor nitpick because like I know it's they're not, they haven't been really shown much, especially in Daredevil season three. They didn't really show much when it came to uh, the trailers, so that I'm fine with. But there's not a lot there for me to be really excited about the only thing that i was really excited to see was jigsaw and they kind of messed his look up and that kind of like threw me off because like i mean it goes I'm a lot deeper than the, that the especially like with jigsaw, the show so i think i'm, I'm more mad about he's got, it he's gotta be really feel like it's not with the continuity than it being face. like uh, am i right oh, or dude, wrong uh, it's not uh, comic book faithful like uh yeah. like if you if you ever watch like punisher war zone jigsaw's in there and he looks fucking terrible like it looks like frankenstein more than anything else sorry no, <laughs> no, no, sorry yeah. not, that's not what we're talking about but uh yeah i definitely i'm more of like oh come on his face got totally messed up in season one like why <laughs> is that it? but i think yeah mm-hmm yeah dude the thing about marvel though they like they love to mess with their trailers um you got because like the the hulk wasn't in infinity war but they showed him in the trailer uh you know there's all these different shots that they love just to edit and throw together so i think his face will look a lot worse when we get to the actual um season but i wouldn't be surprised if they just slapped a mask on him that looked worse than his actual face does I, I, I'm going to disagree with you there because the MCU is something completely different than the Netflix shows because they're owned by two different people. And for the Infinity War scenario, I understand why they did it. Yeah. Because – yeah, because it was a massive event film and you didn't want to have – like people – like these fan uh, channels, uh, they're just like connecting the dots with the trailers. Like, okay, this is what the movie's going to be like. They didn't want that, so they obviously did that. But for this – like I don't see how messing like CGIing his face would change the storyline or anything like that. In fact, like he just kind of like ruins the whole persona of Jigsaw, and like there's nothing plot wise at stake with his scars. So that that's why I feel like that's what his face is gonna look like. 
and you brought up the mask. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I saw him put that on guy's a mask. That's pretty scary. Yeah, it was, it was like it, black it, and white. Yeah. Yeah, it reminded me of Jigsaw from the Saw movies. So I'm like, the fuck are you wearing? So uh, <laughs> he is pretty, he is fucking scary until you see the doll in real life. You just drop kick the bitch, and then you're like, oh wait, that's not really him. It's some psychic, like psycho old dude. That doll scared you're like, me. Oh well, fucking push him off his walker. He'll be fine, and then he'll be sitting there getting life alert. Like help! I fall. I can't get up. Whatever. Whatever. I'm not gonna lie though. Too. Well, yeah, when you're a kid, it scares you. When you look at him, look at it now as grown adults, you're like, I could fuck that doll up. Like he's got his little traps. He thinks he's cool. He when took he's a shotgun out, of, blast like to when he stop hiding it. from his traps and he's in front of the traps, he, you you realize like you can deck this bitch <laughs> in one hit. Okay, like, like it doesn't take that much. But um. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty sweet. I, she was I, alive. I, I, I fell like dirt. I said, I I'm not. It's just a nitpicky <laughs> oh thing. God. I feel like. But, uh, to me any for final thoughts on? Oh, I'm so pretty excited too. for it. I hope. Uh, I just. I just hope that they do well. Yeah, seeing what they Andy? did with uh, with Bullseye and Daredevil season three, I'm very excited to see what they're going to do with Jigsaw um, you, you, in season two. Because I first... think I think his uh, I think once we look past like the scars on his face, I think he will be a one of the top notch villains in the Marvel Netflix property movie, uh, shows. You know what's sad when uh, Andy said uh, Daredevil. I didn't even think of Daredevil season three. Uh, Daredevil, uh, Bullseye. I didn't think of Bullseye from season three. I thought best, of Bullseye. Best part of that movie. Best movie. part. Yeah. Best part of that movie. I, I, just, I just thought of that and I started like cracking up. Like I'm just like, what a awful character. <laughs> yeah, that he was bad in that movie. But he, but he he's what saved the movie for me. No, easily. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> I I reviewed that movie for my WTF series. He saved that movie. From me wanting to drink antifreeze, like he saved my life. Like he, when I saw him, I just found joy in life. I was like, "There's a reason to go on. <laughs> There's a reason to keep going in life." Because you got freaking Jennifer Gardner yet again. She's like, she's fighting Ben Affleck, and she, she realizes the guy's blind, right? And then, not too long after the fight. She he stops her from continuing walking onto the street and getting hit by the bus, and then she asks the question, "How'd you do that? You're blind." I'm like, "You dumb fucking idiot! You just fought him!" Like, like. Uh, I think we've uh, learned something from this episode. What Ben Affleck does not need to be a superhero. He doesn't, and it's a shame though, because he's a nerd. It's a, it's a shame. Yeah, but, like, but just because you're it, a nerd doesn't mean you can play a superhero. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just like. Luck of the draw. He's like the guy at Vegas where he's like a high roller. And then as soon as he gets like a little confident, he wants to go to the big boys table. He just really just like shits the bed. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's what he is. He's, he's a good, he's a good actor. But as soon as he tries to go to these other properties, goes to a new table, he just he F's up it. everything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't just can't do it. This, he keeps uh, getting 22 in blackjack. It's, it's, it's like you're, clo- you're on. there. But there's always something holding you back from uh, beating the house. So What's it's kind of tough. Fault? Okay, and we're back. (laughs) He deserves it after what he put us through in Batman vs Superman and Justice League. Yeah, (laughs) it's 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 really the writing's fault. At at the end of the day, it's really the writing and the directing's fault. I mean, listen, if your if your actor does not look interested as a director, you can either fire him or get just like. You could do something, but I feel like Zack Snyder's like, yes, look uninterested. Makes the character look darker, more brooding. More dark and brooding, please, sir. And I'm like, I think he's I feel like that's what he would do, though. Yeah, Zack? Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I feel like he would do. Because it has to look I like feel- Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight series. It, 100%. That, that's why I, I 100% agree with Nico what Nico said uh, a couple weeks ago. The Dark Knight... Was the best thing and, and the, the worst, worst thing, thing that, yeah. yeah, that happened to the uh, comic book genre. Okay, we're not gonna get sidetracked with the DC universe. We'll make that a completely World different DC. podcast if we have to. Because if, if you want, if you want to listen to thoughts about DC, go check out our podcast, Nerd Crew <laughs> Podcast, where we like to break down the DC EU and talk about how bad it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Worlds of DC. <laughs> Humble brag. 
I'll show you next <laughs> DC universe. Extended Universe. That was the dumbest ass uh, cinematic universe name ever. <laughs> DC Extended Universe. Whatever. Okay. New topic. <laughs> yeah. So. so <laughs> my God, shut up, Nico. But um, so our, our new topic is relating to uh, 2018. I was on, almost at 2017. I can't believe it's 2019. <laughs> but back back in 2018, uh, so there was a death row of movies. We had Aquaman, Bumblebee, Spider Man, and a couple other ones that kind of didn't make the cut because you know what? They're not nerdy, and let's be honest, they're not doing that well. Uh, so Aquaman, Bumblebee, and Spider Man. Who won critic uh, critic love and who won the box office and which one did you guys like the most? Andy, being the jackass that he is, has him watch Harry Potter and has him uh, watch. First Bumblebee. of all, I don't condemn so nerd shaming. You be a nerd in whatever you like. Kind of uh, so you don't have to like Harry Potter. You don't have to watch it. It is a good involved. series. So, Nico, you go first. It, it's a good series. Yes, <laughs> just like that, <laughs> and especially the prequels. Oh, I love. Just like, oh, put the watched it. What right do you mean? Veins. Just like I you love can love so episode seven and eight. Oh, okay. And the pre- okay. <laughs> and the prequels. Either, but I do they're not one in the, the same to me. I do not Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I was about to say that's. All right. For me, <laughs> no, I, this, I, I, the I three films we're talking about: veins, Aquaman, <laughs> Spider Man, Bumblebee. I don't think it's really a contest. Uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse takes the cake. This is a storyline <laughs> that I've wanted for so long. I still want it in live action with Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland. Even throw the dude in who played Spider Man in Japan. I don't care. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Give it to me. Put it in my veins. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been so funny, dude. I would have loved that so much. The dude's probably like 80 right now, but uh, that was back in bring, the 70s. Bring, uh, bring back he's, the he's giant He's sitting there with uh, a fucking walker trying to well. swing. He's and, like, uh, <laughs> And then like, I really enjoyed back. the other two. Um, <laughs> fucking retired like Spider-Man, Aquaman, like Mermaid Man and Boy. Just because of like my nerdy superhero side. Uh uh I I just enjoyed myself more in Aquaman. Uh uh, I liked Bumblebee. I was I'm not a big fan of any of the Transformers oh, okay. movies. I was like, about to say, like everyone's wow. like the first one was good, and I'm just like I don't I didn't care. I still don't care. Yeah, um, it's fine. but yeah, I really sure. liked the beginning. The first like 15 minutes or whatever it is of Bumblebee is better than all of those movies. So don't watch if you haven't. Let me save you right now from those Michael Bay, whatever the hell it is, those those Bay formers. Uh, just just go and watch. Just go watch Bumblebee. It's so good. Uh, they could have done a little bit better stuff, but I love John <laughs> Cena. Whatever. I like Haley Steinfeld. It was great. Uh, I <laughs> uh, definitely <laughs> worth a watch. Gasp. Okay, Andy? Uh, yeah, I 100% agree that the Spider-Man movie is – probably the best movie of the year Mm -hmm, i agree uh yeah and i don't think it's really even close um because like yeah i love infinity war but it's completely different um because infinity war wasn't a great movie like movie wise but it was still you know this big event movie that i loved yeah yeah exactly it's it's a it's an event film yeah that doesn't really uh stick to the standards of filmmaking right so when i look at superhero movies completely different than i look at every other movie because like if you go into a superhero movie trying to be all critical and oh this didn't look like that what blah 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 whatever you're gonna hate every superhero movie because it's not the same thing um yeah so i look at them completely different so i thought the spider-man movie was nearly perfect if not perfect um Mm -hmm. i really enjoyed aquaman more than i thought i was going to um just because it's aquaman and he was the most made fun of superhero of all time um but they've the fact that they found a way to make him look cool which is weird to say that aquaman is cool um yeah and like (laughs) even on like this last and on, on our last episode we just did our aquaman review um, we even said like Aquaman and Wonder Woman are now like the forefront characters of the Justice League. Cause like Superman's not there. Batman's not there. Both of their movies tanked. They're the movies together tanked. Uh, Cyborg hasn't had a movie yet and Flash hasn't had a movie yet. So those two are like the only two who are still standing really, um, which <laughs> yeah. is weird to think. And then Bumblebee, the reason why I haven't really went to go see Bumblebee is, 
Um, I was one of those ones that loved the first Bayformer movie. Um, but the last night really burned me from yeah. Transformers movies because that movie... I've only been bored in two movies to where I've like had to keep myself occupied till the movie was done, like on my phone or like sleeping or whatever. Um, the last night was one of them, and Batman versus Superman was the other one. I say, so, dude, like, I actually, <laughs> yeah, dude, I fell asleep in BVS. I was like, after like the whole Metropolis thing, I started falling yeah. asleep. Yeah, <laughs> well, like I went, like I saw it. It's opening night, and then I went like a couple nights later because I was like, maybe it was just me. Maybe it was because like sometimes the theater you're in really can affect yeah, your movie a- going so like yeah, exactly. i was like so i'll go see the different theater same thing happened so i was like nope it's the movie yeah, not me um so <laughs> i haven't gone to see it yet because i'm still is, having is it because like, you can't <laughs> flashbacks can't and like ptsd screen? from from all the bayformer movies <laughs> plus i'm not <laughs> the biggest john cena fan <laughs> in the world when it comes to acting so uh that's one of the other reasons why <laughs> right yes yeah, and his name is john cena i don't know where he's at every time he shows up i'm like i can't see him I just no. Every time I see him on screen, his theme song just keeps playing in my head over and over and over again. Because <laughs> like I went and saw uh, Sisters, um, and he was in it. That was like the only movie I th- I liked him in because he was actually funny. Because he played a meat-headed idiot, and that's I feel like that's who he truly is as a person. Um, I'm not a John, <laughs> John, I'm not make a wish, Cena fan at all. Uh, can't has granted more wishes um, than anybody else, like by a long shot. Just so. uh, I think and his also, personality's fine. Like as I, I don't being, care because my brother, eh. my little. Um, so my. <laughs> I, all right, I'm just, I'm just. Definitely, I yeah, but yeah, I totally enjoy understand it. that. Uh, but my little brother was the biggest WWE <laughs> no, fan. No, he is little, a good guy, and he met John Cena. Okay. He is a good guy. <laughs> Super nice too. Uh, so I just don't like the wrestling character. I can't say anything about that's the thing. So. Gotcha. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I I like the guy, just don't like the character. Um, yeah, that's fair. Which is that's fair. fair, but uh, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why I haven't went to go see Bumblebee is because I just didn't really have any interest mm-hmm. to go see it. Um, even after it got like a ninety-seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes from critics, which critics on Rotten Tomatoes aren't always right. In fact, hardly they're ever right. So, uh, that was... I mean, it's, just... it's it's not it's not usually, like, that's one thing... That, I know that's not what you're suggesting, but that's what one thing people always say. Like, I remember back in 2017, people were trying to, like, get rid of Rotten Tomatoes because of uh, them constantly hating on DC films and shit like that. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I hope you know Rotten Tomatoes is not a system where, like, they give you a 1 out of 100. It's a, It's literally... Critics from around the world who watch the movie, they give it a positive or negative, and they give you a percentage of what critics thought about it. Like, yeah. if sixty percent of critics liked it, guess what? It's getting sixty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, I'm like, I don't know what this fucking bullshit is. Like, I just have a hard time like, believing that like Infinity War was is is, is close to uh, Thor: The Dark World, and those two movies are not close together. Yeah, I, I feel like okay, I'll I'll, I'll go on with uh, about Bumblebee. I really, really enjoyed Bumblebee, and the thing I enjoyed it a lot more than most people. Um, I had a lot of fun with it because, yet again, I was like you, Andy. Like after the last night, I did not watch the next one. God knows what the hell it was called. Like it was something about King Arthur. Uh, fuck it, whatever. I don't care. Um, after I didn't watch the fifth one because I was so scarred about the fourth one, and. I heard they were making a Bumblebee movie. The entire time, I did nothing but shit on it. <laughs> and then, I, I, like, I was like, this is a dumb idea. Then the first trailer came out. I was intrigued. And then I kept I kept my uh, emotions at bay. And then, no pun intended. <laughs> and uh, when I went to watch the movie, I just had so much fun. And there's some times where John Cena's character does overact. But he at the end of the day, his character is supposed to be really fun. Like... Uh, Nico, agree, agree or disagree yeah, with me? Yeah, I like that too. The opening I just, act uh, we have with I just, them, like, Andy, this, cha- that, this, that probably, this movie probably won't change your mind about John Cena's acting. I was acting cracking me up. Like I thought that was really but like, funny uh, shit. But I did, I did, I just don't, I, I just like him. So, like, that, especially the part in the beginning definitely was good. But then it, he doesn't really do much after that. He does have okay. one good yeah. line about the Decepticons, yeah. though. Definitely. 
Yeah, yeah, that was that was the trailers, but that that was really good. But I feel like as John Cena as an actor, he is improving. Yeah, he, he is he is Train trying wreck? to take his uh, acting career seriously. I remember when uh, that you know that romantic comedy that you were talking about, Sisters. I don't think it was Sisters. No, Sisters was just the comedy. No, no he no, was, it was in the one a with the, Train Wreck. What was that other one? Train Wreck. Thank yeah. you. Uh, it was after that movie where he said, "I'm going to take my acting career seriously." And he spent, like, millions and millions of dollars on acting coaches. I mean, does that show here? No. But, like, he said he's not going to be wrestling forever. So he said that he wants to become an actor when he's done wrestling. And uh, if he's serious enough and he takes the time, he can do it. I mean, Dwayne Johnson wasn't the greatest actor when he first came out. But, like, it took him a couple movies. And then when he started getting good, started getting good, he was in that Disney uh, Tooth Fairy shit pool, if you will. <laughs> Tooth Fairy and the what game was that? Plan. Game Plan. Yeah. yeah, the Game Plan. He was stuck in those movies. But after he got out of that, he had the experience and he started doing more fun roles. Then he started becoming his own self. I feel like that's going to be the same thing with Dwayne, uh, not Dwayne Johnson, I'm going to say him again, uh, John Cena. I just I feel like he's going to have to put a little bit more effort because even though he's very charismatic, he's not as I think we'd all agree, he's not as charismatic as John, uh, Dwayne Johnson. I'm going to say John Cena. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, uh, he is improving. Uh, I thought he was really fun in the role. Um, I still will put Spider-Man uh, into the Spider-Verse over that though, because yet again, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I'm a and Spider-Man like the, into the Spider-Verse. Uh, st- I did not think I was gonna ever get that story, and I agree with Nico. I wanted to see with all the live-action Spider-Man. I thought that would have been really effing cool to see. Imagine seeing a live-action uh, Peter Porker. That would have been really effing cool. Um, but for what the story was, I see why they made it animated, and it's a lot of fun. The story, like uh, Andy said, near perfect. It was really good. I I watched it twice. The first time I went there to go have fun. The second time I was still trying to have fun, but I was trying to like really like like get into the knit and grit because I'm a, I'm a film critic at the end of the day. So I wanted to see if there was something I missed critically, and uh, I. S- Saw nothing. There was one time I was like, "Wait a minute, that makes no sense." About for people who didn't watch uh, Spider-Man, uh, skip this part. Uh, about Gwen, I was like, "Wait, how is she there before the whole thing happened? Like before the the collider blew up?" But then she, I I caught it on the second viewing where she said, "I was literally knocked back a week." I was like, "Okay, makes sense." I, I didn't catch that part in the first viewing. It didn't bother me because I didn't really think about it. On my second view, I, I started catching on. I'm like, wait a minute. That's really her. How did that happen? And then it was one line of dialogue that fixed it. Seriously, guys. See? Take a note from this movie. One line of dialogue literally fixes most of your plot holes. Like, hey, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. One line of dialogue. Makes sense. Got it. Okay. See, it's it's just – it shows you that they care. It was a lot of fun. I love um, – uh, Nicholas Cage as Batman. <laughs> Batman. Oh my God! I'm really throwing off myself today. Uh, Sp- <laughs> Spider Man Noir. Uh, I loved him when he's like, I don't pick the ballroom. I just dance. I, I, he's. I hope he makes it back in, into uh, acting career because he's been making a slow comeback. He was in this movie called Mom and Dad. I did a trailer reaction about it a couple months ago. That shit looks hilarious and over the top, and it looks like he's making a slow have, comeback. Have you seen Mandy? No, I have not. It is probably his best movie. Okay, I'll th- now it's on my radar. It is uh, that- extremely good. I love it. Okay, now, now it's on my radar. Make sure you definitely uh, message me in the Discord so we can uh, really uh, talk about that and so I know uh, where I can find it and watch it. Okay. But uh, uh, continuing, Aquaman I didn't hate, I didn't love. Um, I had I had fun with it, I did. Uh, I, I'm kind of probably in the same boat with Andy on this one. I enjoyed it a lot more than I was thinking I was going to, uh, but there were still enough things that I was like, it was like there was a lot of exposition scenes, and those exposition scenes I was kind of like bored at. The only exposition scene I liked was when they were explaining how Atlantis sunk. That was the only time I was really invested in the exposition and the lore. But everything else, I was just like, eh. Can we can we move on to more Aquaman stuff like more Aquaman be, being a dude and shit like that? Yeah, if if you'd have cut out like the twenty minutes where Black Manta was making his whole costume, I think you would have been fine. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't need my villain to act like the the hero. <laughs> you know what I mean? And make a yeah. funny line. Like I don't care how he gets how he makes it. 
I just want to see it, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I will say the best scene by far, I think everyone agrees with this, who uh, who liked Aquaman or who even didn't like Aquaman. That Italy scene with Black Mana versus Aquaman was so dope. Yeah. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, There's a couple cool shots that made me think to myself, like, how the hell did they do that? Like, the, the long tracking shots. Sometimes it got a little... Um, I won't say annoying, but it felt like they were trying to be fancy. I'm like, okay, let's just keep it simple. Like, you don't need to do all this extra shit. I feel like you could do keep it a little simpler, but like, it was still well shot that that fight scene. But uh, it was really fun. I had a like, I really enjoyed that entire scene. Uh, I love that ending, that that last fight. I didn't know how big that monster was. He had a fight to get that suit, but Jesus Christ, it was huge. It reminded me of Pacific Rim. I was like, fuck, is that a kaiju? Jesus Christ. Like, I remember I was watching it with my friend. He's like, is that a kaiju for Pacific Rim? I'm like, you're not wrong. It does look exactly like one of them, but just with tentacles and shit like that. But, um, yeah. So I think Spider-Man wins the, uh, the, the, the best movie. Uh, financially, uh, is obviously going to be Aquaman though. Cause it's Aquaman. It's a superhero movie. We're in a superhero craze. Uh, it's unfortunate that Spider-Man's not making as much money as I hoped it would. No, it's it's gonna uh, it's gonna. It only made thirty six million in its Sony. opening weekend, which is kind of sad, because uh, I really wanted to get a sequel. If we don't get a sequel, I'm gonna kick, scream, throw a tantrum until Sony does it. Um, yeah, I think they're doing a uh, a Spider Woman movie too. I, I know they said that the sequel is gonna be focused on Spider Gwen and uh, Miles Morales. Well, I think but, they're doing like a, a Spider Gwen movie. Uh, uh, I think uh, I think that we are definitely we need uh, Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Um, He's one of my favorite Spider Man. Silk is one of them. Uh, so I'm so glad Gwen, Silk and somebody else. Uh, yeah, I I, okay. I, I I dig him. But, uh, I think his suit's awesome. Uh, I like Miguel O'Hara. Uh, he's a Hispanic yes. Spider Man, yes. so I, I, I definitely love him looked so up much. to him a lot. I uh, love his comics. Uh, I like how he says shock instead of fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He said, what the shock? Or like, he'll say, oh, shock this. And then, like, I don't know. Uh, uh, I think that Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse had probably one of the best post credit <laughs> scenes since, like, Thanos and Avengers. <laughs> like, it's so good. Easily. Yes. Easily. I, I watched it in a second. I, I was like, I was surprised. I'll put, I'll Even put it to you I like what was coming. I still laughed <laughs> just as hard. I was like, that. <laughs> I'll point it to you like you've never been pointed in your life. Which one of them pointed first? No, you pointed. <laughs> then you got uh, Spider Man 2099 pointing both his fingers at him and jumping up and down. And he's like, you pointed first. <laughs> 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 It's so I mean people are expecting like some good like uh teaser for a sequel, then you get that shit that's just amazing. That's why I want the sequel to focus on Miles and Spider Gwen and then have Spider Man twenty ninety nine involved because yeah, that's what he's watching. If I'm not mistaken, sure. like what he was referencing is that he found a way to go to different dimensions and actually stay there without being freaking ripped to shreds. Okay. So like I feel like that's a good way that like I think that's why I think he'll be a crucial part in a sequel to have like because they definitely said that the sequel with Miles Morales will be focused on uh, Spider Gwen and him and then I'm like well if they're involved then you kind of have to have Spider Man twenty ninety nine in there I feel like it's gonna be those two <laughs> uh, Spider Man twenty ninety nine being just, oh that's like, really good uh, like also twenty ninety nine is so, voiced by uh, Oscar what are you Isaac doing? So, doing over I'm all for it like, they didn't oh, just they didn't shock? they didn't just bring him in just for but, um, post credits you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, you could tell if you bring in something like that, you 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 got to. And I remember when I first saw it, Spider Man twenty ninety nine is my favorite sub. Uh, those, Spider-Man those are great games from the uh, main uh, Peter Parker. He's my favorite twenty ninety nine. I always look forward to him. Um, even in the shitty games he was in, like uh, what was it? the Spider Verse game that they had back in like PlayStation. Eh. 
they were all right at the end of the day. But like, if I play them now, I bet you I'm not gonna like them. But anyway, uh, I always you resonated towards 2099. I just love the character so much. So I'm really excited uh, to see more of it. Any final thoughts, guys? Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, one of the things that that <laughs> took me out of Aquaman, I think, would have made it a lot better, um, is the script was just so bad. I get, I get, I get, I, I can agree with that. Like, it, there was a lot of sketchy parts. Yeah, the script was just so rough, and I get it. Like, and what I, the thing I loved the most about it is that it realized what it was. Like, it's about a guy who can swim faster than like the the uh, sound barrier, like all these different things. He can talk to fish. Like, I get it. <laughs> and it's a comic book movie, yeah. and it was like it was campy at times, but like. That's what it was. So, like, I was okay with that, but the script at times was just really rough. Yeah. And the I, humor I in it that. was not – like, it was better than all the other DC movies, but it still was not that funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was times I laughed, but I will agree with you. There was times that they would make a joke, and I didn't laugh, and not too many other people did yeah. in my theater. But I feel like you're right. The the humor is better in this one, and I did find myself laughing a little bit more just because of Jason Momoa and the the charisma he brings to the screen. Yeah. And so I was I found myself laughing more at his jokes than anybody else's. Because he looked like he just he he looked like he wanted to be there, and he looked like he was having fun. Oh, and if like the lead actor looks like they're having fun, then ninety percent of the time it's going to be at least okay. So yeah, like. I just started watching. I just started binging his interviews on online. The dude's oh, he's so hilarious. charming and fun. He's hilarious. Dude, he's freaking. Dude, he's fucking hilarious. I love the guy. He's so like genuine and like like I I just love it. Like I like seeing these guys. Like people like Chris Pratt and then just like Mark Ruffalo is uh, another Jason, one. Mark yeah, just like. All these guys who are just like so down to earth and just like so genuine, especially, dude, Jason Momoa is Aquaman, and he was in one of the most. He was in the beginning one of the most iconic TV shows to date with uh, Game of Thrones. The guy still gets fucking super excited, and like I'm talking about, like squealing like a teenage girl when he's on SNL. He's like, oh my god, guys, I'm gonna be on SNL. Holy fucking shit! He's like sitting there uh, like geeking out, like he doesn't hide it. The dude's fucking muscular, tough looking. If you looked at him, you'd be like, he's really scary. And then you look at that video, it's like a complete opposite. Like, I feel like if I was dying tomorrow and I could talk to one person, have a beer with one person, I'd be like, I'm picking Jason Momoa. <laughs> screw Dwayne Johnson. Screw everybody else. Screw Kevin Hart. Screw freaking Captain America. I'm, I'm sitting down with Jason Momoa just because that guy looks like he knows how to party. Like, he's sitting there with sandals and shit like that. He's like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Everyone's sitting there with, like, their little suits getting ready to get on SNL. He's sitting there with his, like, a little, you know, casual clothes, his, like, you know, long baggy pants and his sandals. He's like, oh, yeah, what's up? <laughs> like, the guy looks like he knows how to fun, and that's why I find him in this role. So refreshing because when that first image came out for like Justice League, remember how dark and brooding that looked? It looked just fuck. It was black and white. <laughs> it was literally black and white with an angry guy. <laughs> I'm like, <"Yeah." laughs> I was like, yikes, that's kind of scary. But yeah, that's my final thoughts. Uh, uh, did you guys both say your final thoughts, or did just one of you? Yeah, yeah, I said mine. <laughs> okay, so. We'll go to our final topic then. Um, which Marvel hero and DC hero needs their own movie? So, uh, Andy, you can go first, and then we'll go to uh, Nico, and then we'll go to me. Um, so, for Marvel, uh, I'm probably the only one that's going to have this guy on there, or it could be the other. Anyways, um, I would love to see at least a Hawkeye movie because it can either be Clint Barton or Kate Bishop. I don't really care. Um, but I do think a, a Hawkeye movie would be, it would fit really well with the MCU. Um, and I think it would just be a whole lot of fun for them to do that well, with Hawkeye. Cause yeah, I think he, he deserves it at too. this point, um, yeah. throughout the MCU. Uh, and then I also had like, I think Moon Knight needs his own movie or at least like a TV show. Um, yeah. And then another one I thought of that would be really weird, but cool, mm -hmm. um, would be Sentry. I think he would be. Uh, a really cool character to put in to the MCU, especially if they want to go really to like, awesome the, the Dark Marvel Avengers. That they can do um, I think he would be really cool. Uh, DC uh, can to introduce that but, character uh, and then but, have him come in. To yeah, be but they kind of already Avengers. did that with Captain America. So, DC, yes, <laughs> yes, because he's basically Superman. 
Stop stealing my yeah. Pick. Yeah, just character wise, yeah. And then uh, DC wise, I um I would love a Martian Manhunter movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Agreed. Green Lantern. Um, a better one. <laughs> yeah, a better Green Lantern. Um, and it's weird that we have had all these movies, the Justice League movie, all that, yet we still haven't had a solo Batman movie. Um, and the fact that they are now calling it Worlds of DC, they could reboot Batman and make him whoever they want to be. Um, so I wouldn't mind a different Batman version than Ben Affleck. Yeah. A lot of hate on Ben Affleck this episode, but... Yeah, it's kind of tough. Still. <clears throat> um, and then if they ever make the Flashpoint movie... And make it good. You know, they, they were, they're they were not going to probably do it anymore. Uh, Nika, before you get started, I just want to bring this up. They brought, you know, uh, the Lampoon Vacation movies. They brought the guy who did the the soft reboot, like, or like the soft sequel. I don't know what you would call it. I guess the sequel uh, t- called Vacation back in like 2016, 2015. Like, they got the director of that to do Flashpoint. One of the darkest DC movies in DC Comics ever, and they got a comedy writer who came and direct comedy rate. Yeah, it makes you think. I showed my friend uh, Crystal. I showed her the movie. And I'm like, you know what's funny? A comedy uh, writer and director is gonna direct this movie, and she's like, that was not funny one bit. I'm like, you think? <laughs> like, like, yeah, it's it's pretty dark, and like for the first time ever, when DC was still in their dark and brooding phase, they finally get a comedic director as for flashpoint i'm like what do you do what are you doing yeah, like it makes no I, sense i think they need to do a flash movie but i don't think that needs like their first one needs to be flashpoint um yeah. i think they need to introduce the character because i a lot of people liked him in justice league i didn't really like him all that much um i didn't think he was <clears throat> the greatest flash whatever um yeah so I, I think they needed to do a Flash movie, not Flashpoint, just yeah, to introduce sure. the character. You know, uh, so not so for story, that thing about the comedy like director, George Miller, who directed Mad Max, Fury Road, and like all the other Mad Max movies, also directed yeah, Happy Feet. Exactly, I agree. So, <laughs> so like d- yep, one hundred percent, George, George Miller. Yep, facts, fact check me. But yeah, I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk smack about him till he, he, really? he finishes his project. Wait, wait, wait <laughs> but, I'm the movie guy. I should, I should have known that. <laughs> like, holy shit! I like. I'll, I'll check. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> but let's be, look, like the the thing that this guy did was Game Night, which yeah. I thought was okay. A lot of of my friends love the movie. Yeah, was, okay. I liked it. Okay, but um. Vacation. So you that's go ahead and look I, that up. So for DC, I said broke the exact broke. same to you. Green Lantern and uh, Martian Manhunter. Green Lantern. Well, I, I, I would make it like a space cop movie. Uh, uh, it focus on. But I love John Stewart. Uh, but I think Jessica Cruz is really awesome too. But um, Martian Manhunter because I think that his story is the is more the heart mm-hmm. more heartbreaking than most. Uh, Superman really does have a heartbreaking story, but I think that Supergirls is a little more heartbreaking because she knew what she lost. And this is a guy, this was Martian Manhunter or somebody that lost everything. And uh, it's not just that he lost everything. Like the people that took his home are still living on, and is on his yeah. home. And, um, I think he doesn't get his due for whatever reason. He got written out of the justice league in the new 52 replaced with cyborg. And then in the movie, he didn't get his due again. Um, I think I think you would have him start on Earth, and then you would tell this through flashbacks, like his whole story, the Battle of the White Martians and stuff like that, and have it deal with racism. Maybe mm-hmm. um, you can yeah. even put it further back uh, in time, or you could do it right now. It doesn't really matter. And then, because there's this perfect line from the Supergirl TV show uh, where they ask, like, Martian Manhunter, John Jones, like, why did you pick to be a black man in America? No offense or anything. And then he's just like, well when I realized that there's prejudice in this world, I wouldn't, why would I want to change my skin when I can change the world? And I thought it was so perfect. And uh, I really want Martian Manhunter, like I said, doesn't get his due. Uh, for The Flash, like you guys were talking about, I had already, in our Iron Man podcast, I talked about a Flash yeah. trilogy that I really yeah. want to see. You would start off, main, I, but I think it just kind of goes maybe a little too close to the fast Flash TV series um, would be the only thing. My only gripe with my own trilogy is how I'd make it hit, uh, how I'd make him like him versus uh, the reverse Flash, having him be the villain 
uh, in the first one. Maybe have a few rogues yeah. pop out. Maybe have Barry Allen, the CSI, <laughs> put them away uh, before they turn into like their final form. Second movie, I would have uh, Rogues Gallery. Maybe all are like Captain Cold, Heat Wave, uh, Mirror Master, whatever you need to do. And then have Grodd be like the man controlling everybody or the ape controlling everybody because uh, he's because <laughs> he's super smart. Uh, third movie, Flashpoint. Because say the Barry kills F- Reverse Flash in the first movie, whatever um, <laughs> he finds a way to come back because Reverse Flash yeah. always finds a way to come back uh, <laughs> and have it be Flashpoint because you have to set up Reverse Flash hating Barry Allen more than anything. He 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 he. You have to set him up. He kills his mom. Reverse Flash is somebody who would rather watch the entire world, entire reality crumble in front of him. Yeah. And, yeah, and, I make, agree. and like to kill Barry Allen, to make Barry Allen suffer. So I think you, you can't set that up in one movie. And it would feel more, it would be more cathartic if it's the third movie, something like that. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, yeah, I agree, especially because mm-hmm. it, it's his like big bad guy. A lot of superhero movies, even in the MCU, they fight their their evil counterpart, and it's become a cliche. And they're slowly straying away from that with other like, just not just Marvel, but with other movies, they're slowly straying away from that. But like, when it comes to your evil counterpart, shouldn't that year be like your greatest fight? Because not only is he like kind of like your He's got your powers. Like, he's just got your powers. And, like, he make him more intimidating. And so there's no real way to go around it because, like, so imagine you had just, like, the speed, right? Imagine you can, like, outrun someone shooting an ice gun at you. A cold gun. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, like, and so there's not too much thought. But when it comes to another speedster, you should have a lot more thought behind it, which makes it a lot more intimidating and make him a lot faster than you. A like speedster, but it's me. You know, I'm the other speedster. Of, uh, a flash in where it's like, it's another speedster, another speedster. Yeah. And you please, know, don't make now it they're fi- please don't make it zoom. Yeah. Oh. And then oh my, uh, God, my Marvel pick, <laughs> uh, I just really picked storylines. I want to see Spider Verse. I already said that. Dumb, Name drop. But yeah, like uh, I'm glad. Darede- that, I'm glad. Uh, in a perfect world, that. I just want to see Daredevil, like okay. Charlie Cox's Daredevil, not just a regular like new Daredevil. Whatever. Uh, I thought about the Fantastic Four. I hate how people that <laughs> people always say like, "Oh, Fantastic Four, they're so Fantastic Four, yes. they're so lame or whatever." I was like, "There's a reason they were." a comic for 60 years their reason that like they saved stan lee's career or like uh re like re where stan lee reinvented himself with the fantastic four comic there's still stories to be told yeah that yeah exactly that i remember that Entire Justice story, League, or, the entire oh, I was gonna say Justice was Society, created, America? just because DC had their own team, and that was the Justice League, or uh, uh, what the fuck was it called back in the day? Um, Super Friends, uh, yeah, Justice Society. That's what it was. It was just ju- Justice Society. So that Fantastic Four uh, was the response to that because Marvel kept breathing down Stanley's neck, it's like, "Hey, we need a team. We need a team." So he's like, "Okay, let's make it the Fantastic Four. and um. It is a story that can be done. It's just the fact that for some reason Fox can't get a hold of it because you know when you get a good director, a good writer, for some reason you don't think that's good enough and you need to breathe down the the dude's neck. Like there was three major action sequences that they took out, and that's directly from the director. They kicked him out of the CGI room. They kicked him out of the 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 editing room. They were like, you know what? Fuck you. You're fired. Leave. Bye. And then they took over. I'm like. Dude, you're not the filmmaker. You're the funders, okay? You are screwing off. Like, you're screwing the craft over. You're screwing the craft over. Like, when you hire a painter to say, hey, paint my mother. And for some reason, you're displeased because it looks weird. And it's only, like, what, five days in. You don't say, move, bitch, and give me the paintbrush. And then you paint it yourself. Because guess what? It's going to look like total shit. Because guess okay, what? Uh, you would so have hired want, a right. <laughs> Let me just paint figure that out. Right. The first uh, Punisher, you like, do it same yourself. thing so, same, in the same vein as Daredevil. But I also like in the comics, anyway. which I didn't know until I started yeah. reading comics, <clears throat> that other superheroes <laughs> don't fucking like the Punisher. <laughs> because he's too fucking crazy and they're like even in civil war where they're captain america's like get the fuck out you're not on our team like 
Like I, I think that's that's something we we kind of pick up with not. him and Daredevil, which I think is really cool. But yeah. I'd love to see him with, <laughs> like, like maybe the Avengers, like to be that contrast. Like, yeah, you guys are all goody two shoes. Oh, uh, locking away your guys as villains. I just fucking shoot them in the head. Uh, so I would love to see that. I'd love to see Spider Man in just in the MC, yeah, in the Netflix New York in general. It's like, oh, geez, these I people think, are getting I would love to sex. See they're with, getting human uh, traffic. Oh, uh, Mr. Spider-Man. Stark, what do I do? <laughs> and Daredevil and all of them. Yes. I always make yes. Spider Man sound like yeah, Morty. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, what's going on in the back of that truck? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if I could get like if we could get one character from the like the Marvel Netflix shows to the MCU, and it like would you be said, Kingpin. Andy, I would really dig a Moon Knight movie. Yes, I, I would. Yeah, see I, how I, they would, would do it. I don't know which story the they would MCU. use because there's a bunch of different like versions yeah, of Moon really Knight. Good. I would like. To see uh, I like the schizophrenic version the best, <clears throat> so I hope to see that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, for me with DC, I remember a couple of years ago. This is when you know DC was going off on a tangent with like every week they were announcing a movie and then never got made. Uh, back then, they announced a Booster Gold and a Blue Beetle uh, buddy cop movie. It was originally going to be a TV uh, show, and then they they scrapped that idea and they're like, okay, it's going to be a movie. And then it wasn't connected to the DC Extended Universe. Then it was connected to the DC Extended Universe. And then they scrapped it. Whatever. Now we're getting a Blue Beetle movie. So I would like to see a Booster Gold movie. And then have Booster Gold and Blue Beetle team up. And I think that would be a really funny dynamic. Just because Booster Gold's such a dickhead. <laughs> He's so funny. I, I, I think that would be a really funny uh, movie to see. Uh, we were supposed to get one. I'm not sure if we're getting one still. Lobo. I would like to see Lobo. Because um, I forget what uh, storyline it was, but like I think it was um, injustice. It was the injustice uh, gods among us uh, comic storyline, where like they uh, every single superhero was getting a like a, a ring fit in their personality. I think uh, Lobo. I th- no, they were just giving out Green Lantern rings. Lobo gets a Green Lantern ring, and uh, he's going against Atrocitus. And then the first thing that Lobo conjures up is a giant fucking dick, and he swings it. it at them. And I'm like. That's amazing. I would like to see a movie about that. I don't want to see the dick because honestly, it was a really massive dick, and I am. Are you talking? To, are you talking about Lobo or the Green You're Lantern? Right. Are you talking about Hulk? I want to see a pants. giant yeah. throbbing green dick on the big screen in HD. Oh, I would love me. to see it. Name no, drop. But like, I think that. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about Martian Manhunter, dude. Dude, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, name drop. No, like I would like to see. Um, I think those are the characters I would like to see the most on the big screen, and definitely Martian Manhunter. But um, I feel like, realistically speaking, that Martian Manhunter would be used more of as a supporting role because um, I don't. I just see him more as a supporting role. But like, it would be great to see him in his own solo movie because he's got enough storyline to uh, go around with his like you like you said, Nico, with the whole uh, racism and shit like that. Um, but realistically speaking if i had to pick one that would be more likely to happen it's going to be booster gold and uh uh, blue beetle teaming up and then lobo i hope they're still doing lobo but they said that uh michael bay was attached and i'm like (coughs) that's exactly i was like please don't (laughs) like no because i don't want to see uh i mean i guess there's there's enough there like if you just have bay just like saying, "Hey, cool, do this, do that." Don't f- always listen to him, because I feel like some of the shit that happens in the Transformers movies, Lobo would do. He's like, "Hey, cue it in slow motion." He's sitting there slow motion and looking at some like girl's breast, even though she's like in real life like twenty three. She's like, "I'm sixteen. and I'm ha- like, "No, you're not sixteen. Hashtag like, Shia LaBeouf. Like, Whoa, yeah. brother! And, you know, Lobo is creepy like that, but I feel like there's some Michael don't, Bay don't, stuff. Don't that, bring it up. Uh, Lobo would ask. You showed it do. to me. Uh, I don't, think. Stop it. What? Stop it. I'm saving everybody. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. Oh, dude. I love that Shia LaBeouf song, by the way. It's greatest. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing stuff. Look it up, by the way. Um, and for Marvel, I kind of discussed this on Nico's Go, podcast. Go pay to women. Um, I would like to see a Defenders movie. Get rid of Jessica Jones because she doesn't really offer much to the team. Let's be realistic here. She doesn't. Uh, when it comes to her... She offered more than Iron what? Fist did. She kind of did, though. <laughs> but, like, um, I guess the thing you can say with Iron Fist, he provides money. Like, not in the show. In, I'm not talking about just the show because the show, that, that season was just, yeah, it's not good. It was good in some parts, but there was parts where I was just like, eh, whatever. But, like, you with Iron Fist, you got his money. With uh, Luke Cage, you got his bulletproof skin and his superhuman and Luke, strength. You, you, Daredevil, you got his leadership you heard- skills and, and his super sense of hearing. And then Jessica Jones, she's got super strength, and she drinks a lot. And, and she's people a say, "Well, yeah, I'm like, yeah, you can say you that forgot, she's a detective, you forgot, but like, uh, at Luke the Cage's sex day, appeal. You, you got Daredevil, who probably is almost a better Definitely. detective. The only thing she could do that he can't do is take a picture. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. But like, I feel like. But, like, I feel like if you added a character that, like, ha- brought something a little bit more to the team, because I feel like, it, like, I'm not going to go on a huge rant on Jessica Jones, because I I didn't hate the first one. I thought it was okay. The second one, I despised with every living inch of my soul. I think I hated it more than BBS, and that's, that's saying something. You hate it more than um, what? BBS. Wow. I hated season two. I hated season two that much. You hated it worse and than Iron actually, Fist? Okay, Iron Fist was a worse than made show, but season two of Jessica Jones just pissed me off a lot more because the amount of hate in that show is just disgusting, and I felt that hate rubbing onto me. And we all know when I get in a, a, a not so happy mood, I don't rant or anything like that, not one bit. Hmm. But anyway, but anyway, I hated season two, and it, what she, all she did in Defenders. Was bitch and complain and say that I'm not part of a team. I'm not a hero. I'm like, I get it, bitch. I've been hearing you say that shit for the past, what, three fucking seasons? You've been uh, around for Jessica Jones season one, Jessica Jones season two, and then Defenders. That's all she's ever said. I'm not a hero. I get it. You're, you're not a hero. She, she's just, oh my God, I do not like the character. So, like, I feel like you can replace her with somebody else. It could be another female character. I don't fucking care. Just replace it with someone that's more likable, that doesn't hate the world every time she looks at something. J- just saying. So a Defenders movie is something that I would be really interested in with those characters. We're not... Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I wanted to bring up something that Andy said a while back. I almost forgot. Um, they're not 100% not going to the Disney streaming service. I will guarantee you that because if they do, for whatever reason... Uh, they are going to make it a PG-13 series. And let's be honest, the, this is a strong PG-13 borderline rated R uh, series that we got going on here. Punisher is easily rated R with all, the, with all the death and the blood and shit like that. But everything else is a close rated R. It's pretty close to that. Disney's not going to want that on their streaming service. Let's be honest. And the, the contract basically said that they own the rights to these characters. That means they can reboot Daredevil. They can reboot Punisher. They can do whatever they want with uh, these characters, but they can't use those actors, which is really unfortunate. Um, so uh, I would like to see uh, the, these characters brought back on the big screen because I feel like they they, they didn't get enough justice in season one of uh, The Defenders because... All they did, like it took, it takes them three episodes to get together, and I mean like into the same room. And episode three, all they did was yell at each other. And you think, oh, that's fun because that's what happened in the Avengers. I'm like, no, no, it's not fun because guess what? By the end of the show, they were still yelling at each other, even though one of them died, <laughs> like d- supposedly died. Daredevil dies, and yet they're still fucking bickering at each other. And Jessica Jones is like, I hate this team up bullshit. Leading, and they kept bickering at each other in a non-fun way it's not fun bickering like whereas iron man and dr strange when they were bickering it was hilarious but when these characters bickered you just felt uh, like i think genuine that hate. they can't <laughs> like it use was the not characters for two years but so no you i feel like if you redo that again service. like i said that, that, uh, it would be a lot of fun contract so, uh, any final thoughts guys netflix so they can't even use daredevil for and you won't see anything until 2021 at least
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, let's be honest. Like, they even if they could use them now, they want to get a movie out until 2022. That's if they really wanted to. That's if they really wanted to. But they got a pl- they got a plan. They got everything. Well, plus, already all sorted <clears throat> the up. Fox Disney deal is. I think mm-hmm. Brazil is the only country left, or the only area left that has to approve it before it's completely like a done deal. So they'll have all the Fox properties to go through. Yeah. Exactly. And by the way, uh, let's get a Avengers versus X Men storyline in here. Let's do it. Let's make that Avengers yeah, at five, least baby like, boy. At least five years. Uh, not Avengers five. Make that about. Avengers six. Make Avengers five. See, I don't. Uh, I, World War Hulk. I don't really want another team up Avengers movie for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, after Endgame, we need a break and just like that's what I want to. Uh, like they can cross over to each other's movies, but I don't need like a a big event yeah. movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I agree. Like, uh, for shits and giggles, let's just say for shits and giggles that Daredevil does. Uh, they're able to use Daredevil before the next Avengers movie comes out. I would like to see a Daredevil and Spider Man crossover. Mm-hmm. I would like to see. I would just like to see those two interacting. Uh, pick one character whose movie it's going to be. They're going to clearly pick Spider Man because Spider Man is the more iconic one and the one that's going to draw more seats in. And so make it a Spider-Man movie, but have like Daredevil a, a, as a uh, major secondary character that like kind of drives the plot. Yeah. So I think that I, like do a lot of movies like that, like with Thor Ragnarok, you had Hulk in there. I'm mean, like, I feel like you could do a lot of shit like that leading into the next Avengers movie. And I think five years is a little too soon. I think six years is better. So when the next Avengers movie comes out, it's something big. Like, um. I w- like I said, I would like to see either World War World War Hulk, my bad, or a Galactus, um, before we get um, uh, Avengers versus X Men. So I want like the X Men being established and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, one character I forgot was uh, Namor. Atlantis. I wouldn't mind seeing a Namor yes. movie, and then you could set up that that hatred between Black Panther and Namor and Wakanda and wherever he's from. I forget where he's from. Um, I, I've, I've, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think every water <laughs> hero is from Atlantis. Um, uh, it's kind, it's kind of sketchy though because that we we can all agree that that is a direct knockoff to Aquaman and. Well, you know, uh, Civil Wonder War Woman. came out because Batman v Superman was coming out. No, they they they, they made that specifically because. They wanted to split up the Avengers for Infinity right, War. Right, but they, they timed it. They timed it to where it would come out the same year and like a month after Batman v Actually, Superman came out. They they timed it years ago. They timed it like after the first Avengers came out. They timed it. Okay, this movie's coming out. It's just the fact that DC. Let's be honest. Back then, DC announced shit and just threw a fucking uh, date on it. Uh, BVS was supposed to come out. In tw- like early 2015, it was supposed to come out like May or June of 2015. Didn't come out until 2016. That was not Marvel's fault. That was fucking DC's fault for being a bunch of jackasses not knowing how to plan a movie because they're like, fuck, but, uh, they got the, the Avengers movie Superman out. Was we need our, our in Avengers May. movie. And Let's get BVS now. Rush for the Justice said, Cap League. Three is like, coming out you. in May also. Fuck you. I'm and then mad. they moved it back to March. Yeah. Yeah, of 2016. Yeah, when that when that all happened, it was May. Wasn't it May 2015? It was like around there. Originally, it was May 2015. Marvel didn't just pick a fucking love spot that day. They had that shit planned. Well, I for think years. they knew already when, because DC had been rumoring when they were gonna drop Batman v Superman, and so Marvel yeah. was like, "Well, we'll see you do that, and we'll just do it a lot better." And they did a lot better with it. <laughs> Easily. Easily, and they had more characters in yeah. there. So I think the problem was. I think Civil War is like, probably my favorite MCU movie. It's close. To, it's probably my top three uh, for me. It's definitely top three. Um, it, it's incredible that DC had three of the most iconic superheroes, and they had to fight Doomsday with Lex Luthor in there. 
and they fucked that up. But yet you had Cap- Captain America with Iron Man, Black Panther, Spider Man, all these other characters, and yet they still made a better movie. You know why, guys? It's not because it's Marvel and one's DC. It's because one had more focus and one had a better writer and a better director. And they fucking they sued rushed me. everything else on DC. Yes, exactly. So. Like that. What was that flash dream? Fuck that. Like, Lois is the key. <laughs> and you know what that that was whole referencing to? That entire sequence was referencing when Superman comes back from the dead. <laughs> like what? <laughs> so fucking dumb. That was such. Like they made it seem like it was gonna be a big thing, and it was literally used in a five minute fight scene. <laughs> fucking yeah. dumb, dude fucking dumb and wasted storyline they they threw the death of superman they threw bvs they threw wonder woman's introduction in there they threw all these other storylines because they were trying to get to justice league they, oh, they ruined they ruined everything in that movie fuck that movie we're not even gonna get into it okay any final I love thoughts how you said we're not gonna get into it even though 45 minutes of this podcast was talking about bvs <laughs> No, I think I'm good. And I think uh, one of the reasons uh, why I think go? that Civil War is a lot better than BVS. Uh, last last time I'll talk about it for now. Uh, I think those characters <laughs> like really Black Panther, was, Spider-Man were woven into the story while the ones in DC were on an email attachment. <laughs> yep. For like yeah. thirty, not even thirty seconds, like five seconds apiece. <laughs> Fucking dumb, dude. Seriously, so, oh my god. The only good oh, thing man. about no, that was at the end of Justice League is when you see Deathstroke. I got so excited. I'm actually excited. I, I want to see Deathstroke at some point. It was all alluding towards Batman, and that's gone. Oh my god, so, this is a shame. I want I want DC to succeed, but you know they just keep they keep figuring themselves and making us watch. And so but it's kind of tough. Aquaman was a step in the right direction for sure. For sure. Uh, okay, so Andy, where can they uh, the the chat see you? Where can they find you? They can find me personally at I'm Andy York on Twitter, um, and then they can listen to my podcast, the Nerd Crew Podcast. Uh, it comes out every Wednesday. We discuss Marvel, DC, Star Wars wrestling basically anything nerdy you can find us on youtube uh, you at of. new world nerds uh, uh, same thing on twitter you can find podcast. us on soundcloud where we do um, our podcast new YouTube world nation and uh yeah nico where can they find you at And you guys know where to find me. You can subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter at Gumps underscore videos. My Twitter, not my Twitter, my Instagram is officially fucked. So I'm deleting that. So if you follow me on Instagram, guess what? Kiss that shit goodbye and follow me on Twitter. If you don't have Twitter, guess what? Download it. It's free. And then, you know, follow me. Okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. Holy shiznit. A fucking hour and a half. Good shit, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.